G'day. In the world of counting numbers, multiplication manifests itself as repeated addition. For example, in this world, 4 times 5 means 4 groups of 5. Or as I would say in Australia, 4 lots of 5. It's a 5, and a 5, and a 5, and a 4 5. 4 groups of 5. There it is. And let me actually draw a picture of this. I'll draw a nice systematic picture of 4 groups of 5. I'll do one group of 5 as a row of dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Great. I'll do a second row of uh, group of five as a second row of dots. One, two, three, four, five. Here comes a third group of five as a third row. And there's a fourth group of five as a fourth row. So there it is. There's my four groups of five. A four by five rectangular array of dots. I can see four groups of five. Now, the fun thing about this visual image here is I can actually start playing with it. For example, I could chop up this a rectangular array. May I do this? I might think of that five actually as three and two. Three and two. So now I'm seeing what I had was 4 times 5, but now I'm seeing it as this rectangular array, 4 by 3, plus this rectangular array, 4 by 2. Now I could chop up this way as well. Maybe I'll chop it, do a horizontal chop this time, and think that 4, think of that 4 as 1 and 3. So now I'm thinking of this as a 1 by 3 array of dots, and a 1 by 2 array of dots, and a 3 by 3 array of dots, and a 3 by 2 array of dots. Okay. So I can actually think of 4 times 5 in lots of different ways by chopping up the rectangle any way I like. Now as you play this game, it gets kind of tedious to keep drawing dots over and over again. So now I've got these dots in my mind, I might actually draw something a bit simpler. Let me surround each dot with a unit square, square of area 1. Let me do that this time, okay. Alright, even this is getting a bit tedious, but let me do it, let me do it. So I'm going to now have 4 rows of uh, 5, each, uh, each being unit squares now. 4 unit squares by 5 unit squares. Great. But that is tedious to draw as well. So maybe I won't actually draw the unit squares. Maybe I'll just draw a rectangle. Here it is. That's 4 high and 5 long. And in my mind, I'm seeing either unit squares or dots. Which is great. There are 20 unit squares in there. Well, there are 20 dots in here. But having that in my mind, I can now say, oh, if I chop this up, I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to chop this up into 12 unit squares. There they are, 12 of them. And I'm going to drop it up into 8 unit squares. There they are. 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 2 is 8. And there is the area model for multiplication. It's really this picture, a rectangular array of dots, but taking to the next level of doing unit squares and not actually drawing the unit squares. But having this visualization in your base, at the base of your mind, makes sense of, uh, questions, of, of pictures like this. So there's the area model for multiplication. Let's start using it for our advantage, to our advantage. So, I remember in school, I was required to memorize up to our 12 times tables. I think students today, in the US at least, only go up to the 10 times tables. Okay, either way, you're meant to memorize these things, and that's hard. I, I don't enjoy memorizing stuff. I, I have very little in my brain. My brain's very little. Okay, but suppose, okay, suppose I had to get uh, 5 times 7 in my head. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to draw a 5 by 7 array of dots, a 5 by 7 array of unit squares, that is, I'm drawing a 5 by 7 rectangle. Great. Suppose I've forgotten the answer. I don't know the answer. But for some reason, I do have 5 times 5 is 25 in my head. I like square numbers. 5 times 5 is 25. That's in my head. So let me use that to my advantage. Let's split that 7 to get myself a 5. There's a 5 by 5. I guess there's 2 left over. So there's my 5 by 5 is 25. And I guess the other piece is 5 by 2. Oh, that's not too bad. That's 10. And now I can see the answer to 5 times 7. It must be 25 plus 10. It's 35. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, let's do 6 times 8. Let's see if I can uh, help myself with that one. I've forgotten the answer. I can't remember it anymore. So either on a piece of paper or in my mind, I can draw myself a little rectangle. That's 6 by 8. 6 by 8. And I can say, OK, do I have any facts in my head that are related? Well, I like square numbers. 6 times 6. I happen to know it's 36. I don't know why it's in my head, but there it is. But let me use that to my advantage. Let's do uh, 6 and 2. Because there I get my square number, 6 by 6 is 36. 6 by 2, I can work that one out, that's actually going to be 12. And now I can see the answer to this one is going to be 36 plus 12 is 48. 48. Beautiful. Here's the hard one, 7 times 8. And there's actually a lovely story about 7 times 8. Uh, back in the late 90s, uh, the Minister for Labour of Education uh, back in the UK, uh, Stephen Bryars, was once asked in the middle of a radio interview, just out of the blue, on the fly, what's 7 times 8? And he panicked. He was just caught off guard and said, uh, 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 54, and got it wrong. And became a bit of a laughing stock for the UK. 
However, would it be lovely if you could actually show a thought process and teach, teach a whole nation about thinking through mathematics? I think his answer should have been this, if you could think in the moment. I understand the pressures of thinking in the moment. I'm not good at that either. I would make the same mistake. If he could say something like, seven times eight. Oh, that's the hard one. That's the hard one. Um, everyone has trouble seven times eight. Uh, OK, so what do I know? I do know that seven times seven is 49. Maybe I can use that to my advantage. And then maybe in his brain, he's saying, OK, you know, imagine himself a little picture like this. Here's my seven by eight. But don't do eight. Let's chop it up into seven times seven. And I guess one's left over this case. So you could say, OK, I know seven times seven is 49. And now I can see that seven times eight is going to be 49 plus an extra what, seven times one? Seven. Ah, the answer must be 56. If he could de demonstrate some sort of argument like that, what a gift to the world. You don't actually need to memorize your, your multiplication tables. You can actually work them out pretty quickly. Just have a few anchor points. For me, you can see I like square numbers, and those, those facts are in my head. Great, I'll just memorize the first 10 square numbers, which I don't have to memorize because I like playing with them. They're just in my head, and the, everything follows from that. So the area model is a great, great tool for just getting your multiplication facts out into the world if you have to repeat them quickly for the rest of the world.